name is Dennis Erickson, and he is head coach of the most successful program in college football. But in 1991, number one was supposed to be out of reach. This would be a young team playing a tough schedule. But the Canes consider the impossible as second nature, and the result would be astounding. After crushing bowl-bound Arkansas to inaugurate the campaign, Miami faced highly touted Houston in the home opener. Right from the get-go, the Hurricanes harassed Heisman candidate David Klingler without mercy. The seemingly invincible Houston scoring machine had hit a brick wall. would be one of those nights for Mr. Klingler and company, an altogether too familiar experience for Orange Bowl visitors. On the other side of the football, Klingler's opposite number would enjoy a much more pleasant evening. Miami quarterback Gino Toretta served notice that the 91 Hurricane offense would merit mention in the same breath as its illustrious predecessor. With a range of talent that ran the gamut from veteran Lamar Thomas to sophomore the sensation Kevin Williams. Kevin Williams cross 50, 45, down to 40. He is going to go. This is all the way. Touchdown, Kevin Williams. 51 yards for the score. The 40 to 10 blowout propelled Miami into national title consideration, and the ascent was just beginning. The Hurricanes' big play offense begins with a rather basic premise, dominance on the line. Best known for a sophisticated passing attack, the Canes run the ball with equal success, and number 30, Stephen McGuire, set the pace in 1991. Through 10 games, he was the workhorse, rushing for over 600 yards before being sidelined by a late season injury. McGuire ran behind a giant line that featured All-American Leon Searcy, and compatriots Claude Jones, Mario Cristobal, Rudy Barber, Kip Vickers, Marty Golliher, and Kelvin Harris. Only a junior, McGuire returns next year, as does freshman running back Larry Jones, the team's second leading ground gainer. In the hurricane scheme, running backs must double as receivers, and sophomore Martin Patton more than filled the bill. A terrific open field runner, Patton rounded out a traditionally strong core of running backs. And speaking of tradition, who's that man throwing the football? Gino Toretta is merely the latest in a long line of superstar signal callers who have matriculated at the University of Miami. Rifle-armed, intelligent, a leader, and like all Miami quarterbacks, blessed with an all-star receiving core. The number 90 tight end Joe Moore was a force over the middle, a vital cog in the short passing game. Number 35, junior Darrell Spencer, was one of a half dozen Canes to catch more than 20 balls, and his speed and shiftiness made him quite a threat after the reception. Of course, Miami has become synonymous with the long ball, and when you have a receiver with the speed and power of Coleman Bell, a short pass often accomplishes the same purpose. But flying footballs remain the staple of the Hurricane Air Force, and speedsters like Horace Copeland help make it a thing of pure beauty. A pleasant surprise in 1991 was the emergence of sophomore Kevin Williams, who quickly established himself as one of the most exciting players in the game. Indeed, Williams was named First Team All-America, one of five hurricanes so honored in this most magical of seasons. If number one was the goal, then experience was the key. And the reliable performance of wideout Lamar Thomas was the standard by which all others were measured. The team's leading receiver averaged 
15 yards per catch, including six touchdowns. After throttling Houston, the Canes would register lopsided victories over bowl-bound Tulsa and Oklahoma State, setting up a classic showdown with a top 10 powerhouse. Penn State's Joe Paterno is an advocate of hard-nosed defensive football. Unfortunately for his Nittany Lion offense, so is Dennis Erickson. On a balmy October afternoon, the Hurricane defense continued the dominance that had allowed just two touchdowns in the season's first month. It was business as usual in the Penn State backfield. Tony Saka was sacked nine times. Two and one half of those credited to number 98, sophomore Rusty Medeiros. <laughs> Meanwhile, sure-footed Carlos Huerta was enjoying a stellar outing. His two first half field goals sent the teams to the locker room knotted at six all, setting the stage for a second half hurricane explosion. Long scoring passes to Horace Copeland and Lamar Thomas put Miami in position to win the game. And Hurricane special teams would seal the victory with the most electrifying play of the season. Elkowski gets the kick away. Looking at it as Williams on the run, has it at the 10, stops, comes to the near side. Inside, 15, 20, gets to the 25, beats a man, 30, 35, 40, foot race, 40, 30, 20, he will go all the way, 90 yards, Kevin Williams. Kevin Williams' 91-yard punt return was not only a school record, it was the difference in a hard-fought 26-20 victory. Of small consolation to Penn State was the fact that others would soon fall victim to the slippery speed of Mr. Williams. Indeed, Miami's special teams proved themselves to be a not-so-secret weapon in 1991, and the results were easily discernible. The triumph over Penn State would be followed by conquests of Long Beach State, Arizona, and West Virginia. The 8-0 Canes were undefeated for many reasons, not the least of which was utter domination of fourth down. The Miami kicking game enjoyed a banner year, not only with returns and blocks, but with punt coverage led by number 80, the fiery Derek Golden. Good field position was a special team's trademark. The foot in Miami football belonged to All-American Carlos Huerta, the second leading scorer in NCAA history. Number 27 owns 13 of 14 school career kicking records and the NCAA mark for consecutive extra points. Carlos Huerta, an exciting dimension to an explosive attack. And speaking of extra dimensions, welcome to the Terror Dome also known as the Orange Bowl. People in white jerseys believe this place to be a cross between the Bermuda Triangle and the Twilight Zone, where nothing seems to go quite according to plan. College football's ultimate home field advantage has resulted in an amazing run of 45 consecutive UM victories, second longest in NCAA history. Perhaps it's because of the torrid love affair between the Miami faithful and their beloved Hurricanes. Pride and passion, mixed with speed, size, and skill, makes for a winning combination. Home cooking seems to make every hit just a little bit louder. And a sea of orange helps put the razzle in dazzle. Or maybe it's simply that the Kings are smarter than their visitors. 
For the second year in a row, Miami football will graduate every one of its seniors. An enviable record among the ranks of the elite. Against an imposing 1991 schedule that included five teams invited to bowl games, the Canes would employ every weapon at their disposal. The mystique of the Orange Bowl was one. Defense was another. The Canes may not have invented gang tackling, but surely they own the patent. It begins with a solid front wall that featured a pair of senior standout defensive tackles, number 97, Anthony Hamlet, and number 95, Eric Miller. <laughs> Underclassmen would comprise the figurative and literal bulk of the defense. Number 76, Mark Caesar, made his 290-pound presence felt all over the field. The unyielding size of Caesar was complemented by the strength and quickness of sophomore Kevin Patrick, number 86. But for all of Patrick's heroics, it was fellow sophomore Rusty Madaris whom enemy ball carriers feared most. His 10 sacks led the team and his 23 quarterback pressures were of equal import. Team speed, team strength, a Miami trademark, and the swarming mass of orange around the football was sure to include hurricane linebackers. Jesse Armstead and Michael Barrow were perfect examples of the prototype Miami backer. Equal parts savvy and savvy. Quick to the ball and deadly tacklers. Individuals are blessed with the skills of number 45, All-American Darren Smith. Only a junior, Smith is equally adept in all phases of the game. His inspired play was critical to Miami's overwhelming defensive success. As a team, the 91 Canes allowed less than 10 points per game, lowest in the nation. The Hurricanes entered the year with unproven cornerbacks, but the question marks wouldn't last long Number 47, Ryan McNeil, led the team in interceptions. Herbert James lived up to his promise, while Hurley Brown and Charles Farms brought veteran leadership to the secondary. But it was the play of junior free safety Darrell Williams that provided the catalyst. Number 31 was voted first team All-America on the strength of his consistency and outright ability. Perfect after eight games, Miami would take to the road for a classic showdown against undefeated, top-ranked arch-rival Florida State. At stake, a possible national championship in a battle royal matching pride and perfection. Tallahassee, Florida, November 16, 1991. Miami enters Seminole country and does so in a manner befitting a winner. On their first offensive series, the Canes shatter Seminole pretensions of invincibility. Miami has won its last seven games against teams ranked number one and is not daunted by FSU. Toretta, the quarterback, on the take and the give. McGuire, touchdown Miami! When Stephen McGuire pulls into the end zone, the Canes offense has made its point. We cannot be intimidated. The UM defense will add the exclamation mark. The 
remainder of the first half sees the game materialize into a defensive slugfest. Although the Seminoles manage to take the lead, their advantage never becomes insurmountable. FSU receivers pay a heavy price for each reception until Charles Farm breaks the ice with a key pick. The play signals a subtle shift in momentum. Although the Canes trail 16-7 late in the third quarter, they are very much in the game. McGuire is a setback. Coretta on the give. McGuire finds a hold in midfield to the 45, to the 40, 35, 30, down to the 28. And dragging the tackler down with him, that was LeVon Brown. Midway through the final stanza, a Huerta field goal cuts the margin to six. With less than four minutes remaining, Miami drives for the winning score. Toretta, the quarterback, on the take and the give. McGuire to the 30, to the 25, to the 20, to the 16-yard line. Fourth down and eight from the Seminole 13. A number one ranking hangs in the balance. With Larry Jones behind it. Tino looking, throwing, Mark Copeland, three-yard line, first and goal, Miami. They finally found Hart, and it is first and goal for Miami. To Larry Jones, he is at the guard, touchdown, Miami! Larry Jones on a base hill for the score. Larry Jones' touchdown burst vaults the Canes to a stunning 17-16 victory and the New Year's Day Orange Bowl berth. Dennis Erickson will be named Coach of the Year, and subsequent victories over Boston College and bowl-bound San Diego State will cap an undefeated regular season. The Hurricanes are just 60 minutes away from their fourth national title in nine years. January 1st, 1992. The 58th Annual Orange Bowl unveils a classic matchup. Perfect through 11 games, the Canes must stop mighty Nebraska, the country's number one rushing team. Against this Big 8 juggernaut, UM will reply in typical hurricane fashion. The greater the challenge, the more emphatic their response. The course of the contest is determined on the opening kickoff. C.J. Richardson unloads on the Husker return man, offering the international television audience a taste of things to come. Michael Barrow and Mates prepare to meet the charge head on. It's quickly three and out for the beleaguered Midwesterners, who appeared no match for Miami's awesome team speed. On their first possession, the Canes stretch Nebraska's overtaxed defense. College football's most electrifying offense shifts into high gear. Target of choice, Kevin Williams. Gino, long down. Take, short drop. Looking, throwing, looping, end zone. Kevin Williams, touchdown of Miami! Fifty-one yards in five plays. And the Toretta Williams combo accounts for almost all of the real estate. With the game just two minutes old, Miami has already established a smooth, relentless rhythm. The Huskers are forced to punt for a second time, and Gino Toretta is soon back in the spotlight. The Hurricane O takes flight once again. This time, it's acrobatic Lamar Thomas on the receiving end. His twisting, leaping grab sets the table for Carlos Huerta, who coolly pounds home three more. On Nebraska's next play from scrimmage, Ryan McNeil single-handedly busts the option. 
His fumble recovery galvanizes the crowd, fires up his teammates, and ultimately brings on Carlos Huerta for an encore appearance. The 24-yard chip shot increases the lead to 13 points. And the balance of the first half sees Miami display a bewildering array of weapons. Only a pair of untimely penalties keeps the score respectable. In every aspect of the game, UM enjoys complete command. Miami's success in the air is a direct result of a supposedly crippled ground game. Playing without their two top running backs, the Canes call on number 23, Larry Jones, to supply the spark. He responds in magnificent fashion. The third quarter score ups the advantage to 19 points. Nebraska's utility is underscored by a telling statistic. Through three quarters, the Huskers have averaged less than half a yard on first down. Rusty Medeiros is having a career night. And so is Mr. Huerta. Joe Moore will hold. Ball is put down. Kick is high. He's got the accuracy. He has got the distance. 54 yards for Carlos Huerta. Carlos Huerta's 54-yarder, a personal best, caps the hurricane scoring. Leading 22-0, entering quarter number four, the Miami defense will close the case for number one, and do so convincingly. On this night, Miami stakes its claim to the national title by simply eviscerating the nation's number one rushing attack. Nebraska manages less than 200 total yards, and that goose egg never does go away. This is the first time Nebraska has been shut out since 1973. The coup de grace will be administered by the underrated Hurricane Brown game. Larry Jones is voted the game's MVP, and Miami emphasizes its balance by literally running out the final half of the fourth quarter. The one-sided 22 to nothing victory caps a spectacular campaign. For the fourth time in nine years, Miami has won a national championship. For Dennis Erickson, it's his second title in three years. And for the Miami fifth-year seniors, it marks an unbelievable three championships in five years. Tonight's triumph marks more than a mere national title, more than just another perfect season. It proves once and for all that the University of Miami, college football's team of the 80s, is still king of the hill.